we're here to protect you and the, and the ones that you love. It's a good feeling to know that our efforts aren't going unnoticed. It actually brought tears to my eyes to know that we have this support. You're welcome. I must just say, you're welcome. It's stressful, but we're not going anywhere. Welcome to another edition of Bucknell Men's Water Polo Through the Decades. Tonight we have the decade of 2000s, joining head coach John McBride and one of our current student athletes, Jack Otto. Jack is a junior goalie from Prettyville, Illinois, and we're uh, grateful to have him on the session tonight with coach. My name is Todd Newcomb, and I want to thank Geisinger as our sponsor for tonight's session. Geisinger has done a, a tremendous job throughout the pandemic, and as always, they do a great job on a day-in, day-out basis with our student athletes here at Bucknell. So I'm going to get to introducing our guest, and then we'll get right to the questions from Coach McBride. Our first guest today is from the class of 2002, and that's David Kennedy. David was a four-year letter winner and the team captain in 2001. He owns the school's career saves record at 1,002. He also owns the single season saves mark at 393, which he set in the year 2000. He won the Bradley Ann Tufts Award at the Athletic Department Senior Awards Dinner in 2002. Our next guest from the class of 2007 is Mark Masterson. Mark was a three-year letter winner and the team captain in 2006. He was all CWPA Southern Division second team selection in both 2006 and 2007. He was an all Eastern Championship first team selection in 2006 and a second team selection in 2007. And Mark was an honorable mention All-American in 2006. He won the Lee S. Bud Rank Memorial Award at the Athletic Department Senior Awards Dinner. Our next guest from the class of 2008 is Jason Reckle. Jason was a four-year letter winner and the team captain in 2007. He ranked second on the Sprints 1 career list with 169 and second in games played at Bucknell with 123. He was CWPA Southern Division second team selection in 2006 and a first team selection in 2007. He was an All-Eastern Championship second team selection in both 2006 and 2007, and he was an honorable mention All-American in 2007. Jason was a three-time ACWPC All Academic Selection, and he won the Lee S. Bud Rank Memorial Award at the Senior Awards Dinner. And our final guest from the class of 2010 is Johnny Stupp, four-year letter winner and team captain in 2009, owns the single season record for games started at Bucknell at 33, which he did in the 2008 season. He was an All CWPC All Academic Team Selection in 2009. So, coach, it's a great group. Let's have some fun. I'm going to turn it over to you. All right. Before we begin sharing the great memories of your time here at Bucknell, can you update us on your uh, personal life? Where do you live, career, family, et cetera? Dave, we'll start with you. <clears throat> sure. Um, currently, uh, I live in uh, Washington, D.C. with my wife. I've got a, a three-year-old boy and another one on the way in about six weeks. Um, I'm, a, uh, I'm a federal agent, special agent with the Diplomatic Security Service, which is part of the State Department. Uh, I spend a lot of our life overseas. Uh, I've spent two years in Cairo, two years in Islamabad, Pakistan, and I'm headed to Ankara, Turkey in a couple of months. We do protection, of, uh, protection investigations in embassies overseas. So um, I've spent quite a lot of my time since my time in Bucknell overseas, and um, looking forward to uh, hopefully pandemic willing uh, taking my two kids and, and my wife is also a diplomat uh, back overseas in January so awesome Jason um, yeah so I, I live uh, in Chicago or just outside of Chicago with uh, with my wife and uh, three kids as, as crazy as that is to say uh, my, my daughter is uh, is 18 months old and I have newborn twin boys, uh, so it's been, uh, been an exciting, uh, exciting time here at the Reckle House. Um, I spent the, the majority of my career uh, since Bucknell uh, working on Wall Street um, in various investment capacities. And then earlier this year, uh, actually right before the pandemic, uh, joined a really quickly growing software company here in Chicago to lead investor relations for them and, and help lead them into the next phase of, of growth. Um, so. Awesome. Mark? 
All right, I'm out here in San Francisco, uh, similar to Jason, been around Wall Street since graduating from Bucknell, got started in New York, actually working with Jason at a firm there, um, came back to the West Coast, uh, been focusing on real estate for the last eight years and have been both an investor, a lender, um, and now on the advisory firm, advisory side with a small firm called Center Post Advisors, which I founded with my brother and another business partner. Um, so been completely immersed in that and growing that business for the last uh, 18 months. And prior to that, I was at a startup when I was the third member of the team and grew uh, to about 130 employees. So that's been a bit of my DNA and, and what I like to do. Awesome. Johnny. So I'm currently in St. Louis, Missouri, and I work in uh, project management. I'm the director of project management for a mid-sized family business that provides steel products for infrastructure and the energy industries. Uh, not married, I have a girlfriend and working towards that trajectory, trying to catch up to Jason and <laughs> everything else is going well, nothing to complain about. So thanks for having me on the call. Yeah, I, don't, I don't recommend uh, working towards as many kids as quickly. <laughs> <laughs> or space them out a little differently, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, take us back to the beginning and tell us about your recruiting experience and how you ultimately chose to play polo at Bucknell, Dave. You know, so like, um, what's up, stuff? We went to the same high school, um, you know, and we knew each other for a long time. So, you know, I kind of got sucked into the St. Louis to Bucknell pipeline, quite honestly. Um, we wanted to, you know, I, I had dreams of going out west and playing with the, with the, at that time, which was the big boys. Now it's like, you know, quite a bit different uh, 20 years later. Um, but, you know, I came on a visit and got to see the campus and had, you know, got, dragged around that amazing campus with all the fun parties and the cool people and, um, you know, kind of fell in love, obviously. And uh, even with the little bathtub said, uh, this is where I should be playing and uh, this is where I wanted to be. And, you know, it, I think at one time we had six or seven of us uh, St. Louisans uh, in one year they're playing. So it was kind of like the pipeline kind of started and stuck and I couldn't turn it down. Awesome. Jason. Uh, yeah, so my recruitment process, I actually didn't know whether I wanted to play water polo or not um, until going into the summer before my senior year of high school. Um, and I, I got sucked into some like zone stuff and then ultimately some national national team training stuff that summer and realized that I had actually a future in water polo. I, I grew up in Columbus, Ohio, where there were like four water polo teams. And so I didn't know whether or not I was any good and, and could make it at the collegiate level. Um, and so then once I um, started thinking about it, I went on a few visits in the fall of my senior year. Um, thankfully, Bucknell was the first of those visits um, because subsequent to Bucknell, I went to see Princeton and Hopkins and NGW and, and a couple of other of our competitors. Um, but Bucknell was first and we had the brand new pool at that time. And so, you know, met Ziegler and saw the pool and kind of fell in love from there. And, and everything else that I saw after that was, um, was not on par with, with Bucknell. Awesome. Mark? I had a different path to Bucknell. I actually transferred in from UC Irvine. Um, so I was very familiar with East Coast water polo growing up. My older brother played for Harvard. Uh, I was very interested in Harvard. Brown, Princeton, Bucknell, um, had a chance to go to UC Irvine and uh, the bigger school, bigger atmosphere wasn't necessary for me. So I was looking at schools back to the East Coast so I could transfer, they had great academics and got narrowed down to Johns Hopkins, Brown and Bucknell. And on the particular visit, the path took me from Hopkins first, then to Bucknell and similar to these guys and the Jason, uh, Got on campus in February, met with Coach, saw the pool. I knew another person on the team already, Aaron Platchon, and it was a, a natural fit um, and decided that was uh, the spot for me and the rest was history. Awesome. Well, you're the, uh, I think you're the second guy to ever transfer in. We have one more that just came this year, so there's been a big gap between you and the, and the last I came year. in with, uh, with Coach Abdu, too, so it was fun. He played at Irvine and uh, – so we had, uh, we had our California uh, roots coming back here to Bucknell and Lewisburg, but um, 
it was an easy choice once we uh, once we pulled into Bucknell that day. Awesome, Johnny. So as Dave touched on, there's a strong St. Louis connection uh, from MICDS to Bucknell, and there's a lot of similarities between the high school uh, atmosphere and teacher to student ratio, and what's uh, what can be seen at Bucknell. So I actually only scheduled one recruiting trip, went to Bucknell, and as soon as I stepped off campus, decided to apply early decision, and that was it for me. It was pretty simple. Having uh, Abdu pick me up in his purple minivan from the airport and sold me quickly. So it was great. Awesome. Well, I just got off the phone with Abdu, and he said, uh, play nice. So we'll get to those questions later. But, uh, yeah, he's, he wanted me to say hello to you guys. Um, so I'm going to let Jack ask a couple questions. Jack Otto is a uh, junior goalie. He actually is from Illinois. And, and uh, he – we were his uh, – I want to say – Second choice, I was able to convince him not to go to his first choice, and uh, he came and, and played for us his first year. He was a starter and, and brought us all the way to the championship game. Um, and now, obviously, with the pandemic, he's not playing at all, but he definitely has some questions for you guys. So go ahead, Jack. Uh, so what advice would you give me or any other players on the uh, our program today about the college water polo experience at Bucknell? Um, let's start with Dave. Well, man. Um, Nice work this year, by the way. I hope you I hope you break all those few remaining records I have. You, <laughs> yeah, I, I tracked you closely this year. I was very impressed. Good job. Um, goalie bond is, is is a long is a, long, a lifelong bond. Um, you know, I, I don't know if I'd have anything for water polo. You seem to be pretty good on that. I'd say life in general for you or or any of the other guys. I mean, my advice to you know, at, having turned forty is uh, to, is get uncomfortable. Um, do things and do things that make you uncomfortable. Um, you know, I, I, I had a mis I feel like it was a mistake. I didn't, I didn't go abroad when I was in school and I'm not saying that you necessarily need to cause you're, you know, basically professional water polo player, but whether it's learn another language or get overseas or, or, or get uncomfortable. I, I came from a very, you know, sort of, um, Bucknell background, which, you know, you guys have a lot more international players now and you get exposed to a little bit more stuff and all. But I, I feel like the culture of Bucknell and the, probably where you came from is similar to where I did. And um, I think that it's a, I think it's important to um, for your life. I didn't get settled until I got uncomfortable and figured some things out um, and went overseas and, and learned some stuff. And I think that whatever you end up doing in life, um, you know, challenge yourself before you before you head out to the to the final goal, I guess, is kind of what I'm getting at. That would be my advice. Awesome. It's going to be difficult to study abroad this year, but I'll, make, I'll try to make it. Well, of course. I, I, this is all in, in, <laughs> in uh, previous universe, but next universe, whatever. Anyway, find something that's different than uh, your... What Absolutely. Uh, Jason, yourself? Uh, yeah, so I, I guess I'll maybe uh, sound similar to what Dave had to say here, but... Um, I would just say be open-minded, right? I mean, the, the Bucknell experience and the Bucknell education is amazing in, in that, right, it, it prepares you to learn how to think and learn how to experience things. Um, and so just take that one step further and be incredibly open-minded at whatever it is that you're doing, whether it's with your team or with your friends or potential employment or, you know, anything, right? Uh, because there's so much yet that you don't know and so many experiences that you haven't yet had and so many perspectives that you will gain over time. Um, so just be really open-minded and, and take it all in along the way. Awesome, thank you very much. Uh, Mark, yourself? These guys have great advice. I'd say, you know, echoing what Jason said um, is also, you know, all your time at Bucknell and you're, you're there on campus is to take advantage of the resources that are available on campus. and. Really, I think the thing that sticks out to me in my time is the access to sitting down and talking with professors. And I know there's a couple of moments later on in my career where it's three or four years out where I've had an aha moment and I felt the need to email Professor Jensen in the management school to say, you know, thank you. Everything kind of clicked. It took a little bit of time, but it clicked. And, uh, you know, building those uh, relationships with professors are going to help you and you know, not only your time and getting classes done and papers done and the insight and feedback there, but you know, after you graduate, there are 
they're still around and accessible. That's uh, that's a huge part of the experience at Bucknell and why you go there, quite frankly, in my opinion. Absolutely. Student athlete. Uh, John? Yeah, Jack. So when, when I think about my career path and I think about what helped propel me into it, I really attribute a lot of that to the skill sets that I developed uh, playing a Division One college sport. And so one thing that I would implore you to do is really think about or consciously think about the skills that you're developing while playing water polo at Bucknell, you know, communication skills, leadership skills, time management skills. Think about those much more consciously and think about how you can develop them the best you can so that you have a head start when you jump into your career after college, whether it's continuing on with sports or if you want to be a doctor or whatever career path you choose, because those things are extremely transferable and will definitely help you in your uh, future life. Awesome. Thank you so much. Johnny, we just had that very conversation an hour ago with, uh, with Jack. So. Good. Good. Glad to hear it. Yeah. Go ahead, Jack. Sorry. Uh, and then uh, one more question for you guys. Um, what advice do you have about uh, networking after, after Bucknell or actually while we're in Bucknell and still going through the college experience about finding a job right after Bucknell, especially in this time? Um, Dave, you want to start? Yeah, um, you're going to come to me on that one. Um, <laughs> uh, you know, that's a tough one for me, honestly. It took me a little while. Um, you know, like, hmm. you might have to come back to me. <laughs> you know, I mean, I look, I mean, I, I would say um, it's going to be tough right now, especially right now for you guys coming. You got another year, so you might be all right. But coming out right now, I mean, I would say be flexible and, and, and not go crazy putting pressure on yourself. I think that, you know, the job market's going to be tough. I'm not, you know, I'm not a market guy. You know, I'm in the government, and so that's a different sort of thing. But um, I would say, you know, look for experiences that are going to help you down the line and, and, and make some money if you need to. And But, like, don't freak out because it's going to be a difficult when you're coming out, it looks like. And um, it's going to it's gonna get right. So go and do something that's going to set you up for down the line and not freak out about it. I don't have good networking skills uh, out of this because I, I'm not really in the business world or anything like that. But my advice would be is to – is to take a deep breath and and not and not look at this like it's the end of the world if you don't have a job on graduation day. I would say look for experience and look for something else that you can kind of transition into, you know, um, before you try to make a decision on the rest of your life. It's the best I can say. Awesome. Thank you very much. Uh, Jason? Um, yeah, so I, I would say a couple of things. First of all, be humble and be really open-minded. Um, and I think what you'll find is that the Bucknell network and, and particularly the Bucknell water polo network is an extremely strong one and extremely reliable. I, Mark alluded to the fact that, that we worked together, you know, right out of school. Um, we worked with a lot of other Bucknell people. Um, my first internship was with a Bucknell alum. Um, I've leaned on other senior Bucknell leaders over the over my entire career, really, right? Um, but as you're thinking about where you're going to go early on, um, be humble because, you know, you don't really have any skills yet. You know how to maybe do some things, but you don't really have any skills. And so know that, right? And, and lean into it. Um, and then be open-minded because your first job really is about learning as much as possible and figuring out where you want to take your career. Um, and so just use it as a stepping stone to learn uh, and, and build from there. Awesome. Thank you for the advice. Mark? Yeah, uh, similar to what Dave said. It's uh, unfortunately, it's going to be a tough, tough market out there for a while. Um, and it's similar to when Jason and I came out of, of Bucknell right after the 2008 financial crisis. But uh, to kind of Put things in the context. Um, I don't know that anybody's ever found their perfect job right out of uh, right out of college. So you gotta look at the experience and take it all in and see what you can learn and, and build off that. And you know, with what I do, and I'm sure everybody can, Jason can echo this, that networking is the name of the game. And 
you know, just in, in a small sort of capsule of, of what that means. Uh, and, and Newcomb, you'll, you'll understand, you'll laugh at this. Um, you know, right after Bucknell, during that time at Bucknell, I went to a presentation from Scott Lawler, who was at that time running Broadway. And he gave a presentation to our management course. And through the course of that and my career, I kept in touch with Ed Robinson, who I was introduced to from Scott Schulte and, and Hilk. And, uh, you know, just last week, I had a call with Ed Robinson to kind of see what they're doing at Waypoint. And it's just the world of, of Bucknell being the common, uh, common denominator amongst everybody. And so, you know, always kind of as you get going, uh, you know, looking up alumni. I mean, I know uh, there's a growing presence of Bucknell alumni here in the Bay Area. I can think from the contemporaries when Jason and I played, we have our teammates work at LinkedIn, Salesforce, um, Apple, you know, in marketing. So there's a whole, every different vertical is pretty much covered. Um, both here domestically and overseas with people. And, you know, that, uh, those, those introductions and go a long way um, for, for getting in front of the line and talking to people and, and kind of uh, expanding your presence. Thank you. Absolutely. And John, you? Yeah, I think my peers have hit the nail on the head. Uh, the Bucknell Career Center is an extremely powerful and, at least when I was there, seemingly underutilized resource that I would just implore you to spend as much time there as you can. Uh, Bucknellians are extremely willing to come forward and to support you in any career path needs that you have. In fact, it's, it's how I got my first job with IBM. I took advantage of the externship program at Bucknell my sophomore year, which is a mini internship, and then also connected with the president at that time, Brian Mitchell, who had connections at IBM. And sure enough, just through um, expanding my network through the Bucknell connection, I got a job at IBM. Um, so I would absolutely tell you that use the Career Center, use Coach McBride, use his network, use any water pole players on your team who have parents that are in a career path that you're excited about. Just really put yourself in uncomfortable positions and be comfortable with that and know that's what networking is all about. Coincidentally, I have just applied to two specific jobs at IBM. So. Oh, perfect. <laughs> I like to help. Uh, thanks, Jack. Thanks. Yep. And, um, so we'll move on. Uh, wh what was your most memorable experience um, as part of the Bucknell Polo Program? And this can be uh, PG-13 or it can be whatever you want. But um, remember, I talked to Abdu and he said, uh, try and be gentle. So, um, Dave? Boy, uh, okay. Okay. Um, so I, I have one. Okay, so the tough one, you know, I, I was there, and uh, my senior year was was uh, two thousand two, you know, September eleventh. So if I'm being totally honest, that's the most memorable one where we were about to get on a, you know, we were packing up and uh, getting on a plane the next weekend. Uh, and of course, the incident went down and, and changed all of our lives, of course, and everyone's since. Um, you know, that's the, that's the, if I'm being honest, that's the most memorable weekend. It was just a crazy time, obviously. Um, I would say that my, if I'm going to be more fun about it, um, you know, the, um, the initiation and, and the initiation for freshmen, freshman, uh, polo players when I was there, when we had the, the bathtub was, uh, dumping everybody into the steam room and locking the door until it was, uh, until you couldn't see your hand in front of your face and leaving you in there until somebody, until somebody broke. And, uh, that was, that, that was how we were initiated in. And then it was, uh, <laughs> I will leave it there. But, um, we went, uh, you went on to, uh, to another house to do other fun things after that. Once you broke, once you were initiated, you got into the team. So that, those are, those two memories will, will never leave me. And I will someday tell my son once he's much, much older about those memories. <laughs> Jason? Um, yeah, so a, a lot of my, my favorite memories are, are probably beyond the PG-13 rating. Um, but I did, uh, for, for the one that I'll talk about, I did bring a prop here, um, which is... Yeah, man, Hungary. Everybody can see that. That's, that's our trip to Hungary. Um, and I, I, as I was looking at this, I, I noticed a couple of things. Number one, Stuff and I are the only players in that photo wearing tennis shoes. Um, 
like our Midwest nerds, right, are, are coming out like as we're trekking around Hungary. Um, and, and then, you know, specific to, to that, uh, to that trip, I did have another like good story where, um, I remember we were all at dinner after we'd had a long game, um, when actually our first game in Hungary, we like literally walked off the airplane and into a game against, I think a team of 16 year olds. And we got absolutely smoked by this team of 16 year olds. Like it wasn't even a game. Um, but then later on, um, I remember we had we had a dinner with like a big meal afterwards, and the whole team lined up lined up shots to do. And one of the shots that we chose was for Newcomb specifically, and it it was like on fire. And so we made him do this flaming shot with us, um, just just so we can have the opportunity to weave him into the conversation here. Um, but that trip overall um, was was far and away um, my best experience. Awesome, Mark. I, you know, I have to agree with Jason. The Hungary Slovakia trip was just amazing. Um, a lot of great stories. I, you know, we're all in, in debt to, to Newcomb for the, the games we played up in Slovakia when there's no food or water. And we, we finished three or four games and we went across the street and we found a lovely McDonald's in the middle of the coast of Slovakia. But, uh, you know, besides that, um, you know, the, the Friday night games at Bucknell. Uh, stick out in memory. Um, one game against Princeton that was packed. That was very, very fun. You know, and then of course all the uh, the road trips were, were always a blast. And you know, the uh, just being around the team was the best part of it. Um, and uh, you know, I think there's a couple of, uh, of bigger wins we had during our, our years. Jason, our years, we beat UOP or University Pacific, which was a big deal. And um, you know, every, every August I get nostalgic for not going back to, to campus and going back to practice, you know. I truly do miss that, so wish I could go back. <laughs> <laughs> this is probably something you didn't say when you were going to Hell Week, right? That you missed it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Johnny? Yeah, so I hate to piggyback off Jason and Mark, but certainly the hungry trip. Um, the progression of where we started with losing to that. And I think it was 16 to 18, Jason, give us a little bit of credit. That, that younger team all the way to the end when we played in a tournament and our growth was significant over those you know, 14 nights. Um, but for me, what was most memorable was getting my butt kicked uh, almost in every single game. And then I think it was after the first week, I got punched in the ear and somebody ruptured my eardrum, which was pretty unfortunate because then I was out and had to watch the team. But it taught me a lot of valuable lessons about where you don't put your head in games and not to trust anybody. So uh, it, it was an incredible trip for sure. Yeah, I've definitely heard some uh, other stories from that Hungary trip as well, but they're, they're not for this uh, forum. But um, if you could tell me who was the teammate you admired the most throughout your career and why, Dave? Man, I've been thinking a lot about this one. I just go back to uh, to the weird goal, goalie cult. Um, so I mean, you know, quite honestly, um, I came in as a freshman with a with a really established senior. His name is Zach Flexton. I To be honest, I haven't talked to him since. And I looked up his Facebook today. He's got a young child. Looks like a really happy family. But uh, he was really um, really took care of me. And you know, I was coming. I was gunning for his job. And and and. Um, you know, I didn't get it, but, uh, you know, he, he uh, took care of me and we, we competed hard and we worked out hard and we pushed each other. And um, he never once, uh, you know, pushed me away. Like he took, on, he took me under his wing and he, and he showed me a uh, part of campus that I wouldn't have seen otherwise. And um, he taught me how to work hard in a college level. And um, he really, you know, it, it was really sort of just um, – going kind of above and beyond for somebody that's that's coming after your job so i will i will never forget it and if i ever see him and i hope i do i will uh i will give him a big hug and say thanks awesome jason uh yeah it's so it, it's interesting I, I was thinking a lot about this one as well and you know we played with so many great players and, and so many great and interesting personalities over the course of, of my time there um that, that I didn't know exactly where I wanted to take the answer to this question, but um, I landed on on Aaron Platchon, who was older than me and who I don't think particularly liked me. 
and who was really hard on me. Um, and, but but I, like looking back on it now, I, I don't think I would have been the, the water polo player uh, that I ended up being were it not for Blatron. Um, I mean, he was the older tenured guy on the team when I joined. Um, and I think it took some beating up and, and some, some knowledge along the way to, to you know, inspire me to, to maximize my potential. Um, so that was, that was definitely really helpful. Mark. Yeah, no, I, I thought about this, you know, and I'm as seeing Jason and other teammates kind of evolve over the last few years. I'm very uh, impressed and proud to call you my friends. But, um, you know, I, I thought about our team and, and somebody who totally did a, a massive amount of growth at school um, was Nick Donahue. And he, I remember when we were older and he was this younger guy who came in, he was six foot seven, six foot eight. And, he was at Lawrenceville School and totally raw. He was a goalie. He wasn't uh, that great. And I think you'd agree with me at that point. But he actually worked out super hard every day. And then, you know, by his senior year, I think he was an amazing goalie. He made All-American um, and just really, really built himself up. So I was really proud of him for that and uh, impressed and um, happy with what he did and seeing the results of uh, a lot of hard work. Um, and he put up with a lot from us too. So he definitely, uh, he definitely took it all in stride and, uh, you know, hopefully he used that as motivation. But, you know, at the end of the day, he, uh, he had a very, very impressive career and, uh, proud of him. Yeah, I remember, uh, this big, huge person in the cage when I was coaching at Brown and we just, he just ate everything up. When I was at Brown, we never beat Bucknell because of Nick Donahue, I think. And it's a few other players, but he uh this first few practices he couldn't keep the ball in the pool when he was throwing out the passes, but he <laughs> he worked on that. So he, he got he turned it around and he uh he got very, very good. So impressive. Yeah. yeah. Well I I remember one game somebody said, Why coach, what do we do? We can't we can't score on him. I said, um, throw it at his head and maybe he'll duck. And then not Nick. No. I think he enjoyed it. You know? yes. <laughs> so, whatever. How about you, John? Yeah, Mark stole the person right out of my mind. Nick Donahue, just his growth trajectory from when he came in to Bucknell from his freshman year to his senior year was uh, just unlike anything I'd ever seen. He didn't take sports or really anything in life very seriously in high school and leading up to college. And, you know, because of that and many other things, he was on the wrong end of criticism from about 99% of the time that our team was together. And he still stood, stood by the team and worked hard every single practice despite all the challenges that were thrown his way. And that absolutely paid off by his senior year when he was recognized uh, by the NCAA and by Bucknell's water polo team. And he was definitely one of the best goalies that I had the opportunity to ever play with and watch play. So he, he absolutely deserves that accolade in my mind. Absolutely, absolutely. And uh, all right, we'll do the, what advice would you give me as the current head coach of the program? Dave? Man, I thought about this one, dude. This one's tough. You're doing a pretty good job. So, uh, <laughs> um, not all the time. There's a lot of times where uh, I'm sure there's plenty of people that would disagree with you. But uh, Well, no, I have to say, I really do. I, 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 while I'm thinking, while I'm still trying to come up with an answer, I will say that, um, I do appreciate the emails. Um, it's really fun as uh, 20 years out and I uh, still waking up in the middle of the night, like pretending to save balls and hitting my wife with my elbow um, to, uh, to, to wake up to the emails about how Bucknell did every weekend and how far they've been, you guys have, have been going every year. You know, I mean, I don't know, man. I, I, I think, um, I, I, you know, I'm sort of like on my uh, experience bandwagon here because, um, you know, my life experience has been a little different out of Bucknell. I would say, you know, encourage your guys to to uh, to to do different things than um, than where they've come from. I mean, I think it's really cool that you guys have so many international guys coming in, and that you you know you got to do those hungry trips back in the day with you know Mark and Jason. Um, that's about all I can say. Is is um, you know, I, I would say push the guys to get out of the Bucknell bubble when they have a chance, and it's not water polo. Is basically what I would say. Yeah, we try. We try, and you know. 
give them as much uh, opportunity to do those things. And a few of the guys will go study abroad. You know, they'll take advantage of those opportunities. Uh, the engineers don't because their their life is books and math and s- stuff that I don't understand or can not help them with. Likewise. Yeah. So, but we do encourage them to to go abroad, and we, we do that in the uh, recruiting process. You know, tell them, listen, your junior year, we encourage you to to go abroad. Just go somewhere where there's water polo. So, because yeah. as you guys know, it's a sport where you can't not play for nine months and then expect to jump back in. So if there's a place you can go and maybe jump in the, you have a club team or at the school you're going to or whatever country, but pick a country uh, that has water polo, you know, don't pick Iceland. So how about you, Jason? Um, yeah, well, b- before I answer, I mean, I, I feel like I need to say just in, in the public forum, how, how great you're doing with, or, and how much you're doing with the program. I mean, I think, you know, when, when Mark and I left for sure, and, and even when John left, I mean, the program was, was in a good place and was on an upward trajectory. Um, but I feel really proud to, to be a Bucknell alum at this point. Uh, I think, you know, we're in a really good position. And a lot of that's because of what you're doing. So, um, you know, first of all, thank you, uh, you know, as an alum. Yeah, no, I appreciate it. Um, I, I think, you know, so in, in thinking about this question, um, I, I would just, you know, consistently encourage the guys to stay in the moment and not not focus on what's ahead or not try to think too much ahead. And, and so much of college, you're trying to figure out like what's next. And, you know, we talked about career network and all these things, but, you know, yeah. the reality is you can't get your four years at Bucknell back. Um, and there's so many things that are going to go on in your life after Bucknell um, that if you can stay in the moment and, and really maximize your time there, um, you know, then you'll be all the better for it for, for a variety of reasons. Um, so that's, that's just what I would say there. Yeah. And to be fair, I mean, if you guys played when the pool was 25 meters long, I think, uh, I think that's definitely given me a coaching advantage as to you guys having to play 30 meters. And uh, so there's definitely, you know, the sport changes generation or decade to decade, right? So, you know, you had the three ordinary fouls at center and so forth and so on. And being a goalie was completely different back then than it was when you guys played. But 30 meters to 25 meters, your lives would have been so much better. And uh, you guys were definitely hung a ton of championships up. So. Not, not, not me particularly. I mean, the only move I had was out swimming people. So, <laughs> me, me too, Jason. I love the 30 meters. Well, the uh, – the, the, the counterattack practice has gone away. You know, remember how we used to have 75% of our practices were counterattack practices? Yeah. Anybody can sprint 12 meters now. So uh, it's, it's much different. But how about you, Mark? Yeah, I love the, the updates. Uh, makes I know uh, our classmates from my time, we feel very much up to speed with what's happening with the season, with the team from week to week. Um, it's great to have some more commentary and context around uh, how the team's performing. And last year was awesome, just going from the start of the season through watching the game on Easterns and on internet. And, uh, and then, unfortunately, I couldn't make it that day for Murphy's Law for a work call, but out to Pacific. But seeing uh, you guys represent Bucknell and do great in NCAA's, um, I'd also just encourage you know the guys in the team to to look up and, and look up alumni and part of their networking experience. And if somebody's interested in startup, startup life, talk to Jason, you know, and, and looking for interest and insight into the tech companies, you know, there's each class and each group and each era has a lot of people. I mean, I know I will still look to Schulte for questions about what's going on in private equity in New York and what's what they're seeing. So it's a, it's a great network we have, and we should only try and make it stronger, um, even though we're all spread out across the country. Uh, you know, I, when Jason was traveling out here to the Bay Area uh, with his last job, you know, we caught up in breakfast or dinner or whatever, and that happens with other people, and that happens with other people outside of the Bucknell program, uh, water polo program, and other friends from Bucknell. And it's funny, you know, last year, or a year before when, when Bucknell basketball is playing in NCAAs, we went into a bar at you know, noon to watch the game, and there's four other Bucknell alumni sitting there from three different classes. So it's, uh, 
it's good to connect and, and you know the student athletes to take advantage of uh, their predecessors and you know especially in this challenging time coming up and we're experiencing to to make those connections yeah we have that alumni ne mentor network that i try and push on every freshman when they get here and it's never until they're right to be about a senior that's a hey coach can we look at that alumni mentor network because they're scrambling for a job when so it's yeah. great you guys are encouraging them to hopefully start earlier in that process and make those connections earlier so when it comes you know when you're faced with a situation like you guys in 2008 or even now where this recent class that graduated is going to be backed up and still looking for jobs when next year's class graduates um, looking for the same jobs that if they had started networking earlier maybe they would be in a different situation so it's it's really you know as much as I try and push that on them it's I think it's good that yeah it's going to be you know it's, it's interesting I just look at our contemporaries and one of our classmates the famous Peter O'Keefe you know he works for a New York City based real estate owner operator developer and you know hearing about what they're doing and how they're compensating for the the circumstances of COVID and how they're positioning you learn a lot and that's just from from peers and that's from me and you know they're going to know where people are are growing and as much as some places are hurting other places are growing rapidly and you know between the network of all the people are out there there's a there's a lot of ways to get warm introductions these days so that's uh, something sure. to take advantage of awesome thanks johnny yeah so certainly echoing uh the others John McBride, you, you've done a fantastic job increasing the uh, level of play, at least since we've been there uh, as athletes at Bucknell in terms of uh, the water polo competition. So I won't pretend to be able to give you advice on that. Um, the one comment that I would like to share with you, so my high school coach, my favorite quote that I've heard from him and I hear from him every year at the uh, high school award ceremony at the end of the season, he always reminds the parents that his goal is not to train these children to be the best athletes. It's to train them to be the best men and women. And that's just something that's always stuck, uh, stuck with me. And, uh, you know, I think that's certainly true of Bucknellians. How do we create them or enable them to be the best stewards of the core values at Bucknell in any career path they choose in life? And, and certainly is your job. It's, it's easy for you to help them because you've been there, done that, uh, learn how the skill sets that they're learning, um, how those can be transferred into life and beyond. So that's just the one comment that I'd like to share. Awesome. Thank you. Um, I don't have any other questions. You guys have any last comments or? Wait, I got, I got to know, Hey, uh, Mark or Jason or whatever, whatever happened to Platshaw? What, what's he up to these days? He's, he's got at least two or three kids. He's living in Palo Alto. He actually right out of Bucknell was, one of the first employees at Tesla. And no uh, Sorry if this is on the recording, but that's interesting. He was, was my, yeah, he was a wild animal. He was a freshman when that was my last year, so that's our connection. But if you ever see yeah, him, no, Kennedy, he's doing Kennedy great. Said hi. He, I, well, he's doing great. Um, I see his younger brother occasionally too, who played at Cal. Um, yeah. So, yeah. All right, thanks. I, I, you know, I mean, we've, we've talked so much about networking. I feel like we have to ask Jack what he wants to do. And yeah, how, good question. How we can help him. Uh, so I'm a computer science and mathematics major. Um, this past summer, I got to work for Hightower Advisors doing the uh, uh, data analysis and back-end development of their websites. So if you see any other websites up, I got to make them functional this summer, which was pretty cool. Um, so far, I've applied to a couple more tech companies. Uh, working on that, just trying to get another tech job while everything is going towards the computer life, so. Well, Jack, uh, we, I, so I work for uh, Sprout Social in Chicago. I don't know if, I don't know if you know it, um, but um, we, you know, effectively our social media analytics company, um, and we've been, uh, we're, we're growing really quickly. We've been, we were just ranked as one of the best places to work in Chicago. Um, so if, if, uh, if you want to do a little research and, uh, and come work for Sprout, let me know. I will. Absolutely. You're, uh, right down the, right down the road. I'd take the train there 40 minutes away. Easy. Sounds like a job offer, Jack. 
hey, anything right now would be great. So I'll give it a look and, and reach out to you. Thank you very much. Yeah, yeah Jason, you want Jack working for you, Jason. He's uh, one, one heck of a person, so great guy. Yeah, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lean on Jack because we have a couple seconds left here and put you yeah. on a little bit. Um, can you, I thought it would be kind of neat if you could describe for these guys what it's like on campus right now and what the school has done to have you guys back. Coach McBride mentioned earlier, there's only a handful of schools in our conference that have students on campus. Most of yeah. them are remote. And it's really actually a privilege for us to be in that situation. And I'll also say that you guys as, as students and student athletes have done a really good job of keeping us here and not going. It's, it's hard when you're a college kid to reel in the partying, but you guys have, have done it and we've been here for four plus weeks. So maybe you can describe some of what you've gone through and what it's like so these guys can hear that. Yeah, so I mean, as you can see over my left shoulder here, I've got my mask on my wall. Uh, anytime we step outside our dorm, we have to put it on. Uh, the only time we can't is if we're eating or taking a drink or whatnot. Um, I would say I am. I have 50-50 in classes, so I've got three in person and, and three on a computer. Um, my my classes in person, it's just like spread out. Uh, for my class of 15 people, I'm in a lecture hall of uh, that would hold normally like 100. Um, but uh, we're doing a really good job. I mean even in places that you wouldn't expect it. So like downtown, as you guys were talking about it, people walk around with their masks on anyways. Um, uh, as we were told, just like, you wanna, you wanna display that we wanna stay here. So you, you don't wanna risk like, anything happening. And so everyone's, everyone's done a really good job. I mean, I haven't seen the uh, nightlife you guys are talking about being stuck in the lab for computer science a lot, but um, I would say that uh, the, the times that I have had the option of going out or something like that, I've uh, everyone's wearing masks uh, and it's gone really well. I mean, students have, have really taken it seriously because it's it's a privilege as as uh, both McBride and uh, Miss Newcomb were talking about it. Um, I relish it because it's just like I've got a bunch of friends who've already been sent home from all those other schools, and it just it sucks for them. But I mean, at least I get to be here with all my friends and my team because as you guys have talked about it and clearly you guys were close with your team. So these guys are like brothers. So as much as it's an advantage for you to be here on campus, I want coach now to talk about the frustrations from a coaching standpoint in terms of uh, re-socialization and, and starting the program back and how you guys have, have to wait so long. I mean, that's 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 stuff that most people in the general public don't have any idea about. So John. Well, yeah. I mean, again, it's a privilege and Bucknell has done a tremendous job of allowing us or getting us here. It's, a, it's really a team effort, but it is frustrating. I mean, it's, it's really hampered uh, our ability to go out and recruit. I, mean, I just got a, a memo that we can, we're now not allowed to recruit until January 1st of 2021. So you have a large population of student athletes in high school who are gonna go almost a year without playing water polo, um, which makes it difficult because they're sending us videos of when they were a sophomore or a junior. And you know, it's really, as you guys know, it's really hard to come into a division one program without having played water polo for a year. Uh, so your athlete brain isn't, even if, let's forget about being in shape, but just your brain, you know, there's no, there's no sports really on TV. I mean, it just started, but we're used to watching sports. We're used to keeping our brain going. And, uh, you know, so it's, it's hard. But on the flip side of that, since everybody is at home, all these kids are at home in high school, they have nothing to do but send emails to coaches. So we're getting waking up every day to 25 emails from kids uh, wanting to come to Bucknell. Uh, so th that's been great. So, um, I hope I never hear the word Zoom again, and I wish I had bought stock in Zoom way back when, but uh, you know, someday this will all end, and hopefully the men will have some something that resembles some kind of season uh, next semester, um, and then the women will be able to finish an actual full season because obviously we got, got cut short when we were at Long Beach uh, in March last year. Um, 
I was joking because we had practice the other day and there's such a thing as having being in deck shape as a coach and walking on those tiles on the deck I got really tired and I had to keep sitting down and I was sore afterwards and uh and I have to figure out how to yell through a mask you know I'm like Bane on Batman with the thing over my face and and uh you know blowing a whistle is is interesting uh for sure but it's what we're given it's what we have to do and um yeah we're just trying to prepare for prepare for the future you know we have a few guys that stayed um back in their countries uh obviously one of them who's in beirut lived only from that explosion and you know he wasn't able to come back and had a couple others that just decided to take the semester off because they taking classes online at the end of last semester was uh stressful for them and it it wasn't conducive to real learning and for themselves and they wanted to wait until they could get back in person. So we only had, we're missing probably about four guys on the team. Um, and we're looking forward to next semester. And some of them had visa problems because the U S embassies weren't open in their countries and, uh, because they weren't staffing it. And so the, the visa appointments they had or the interviews they had were canceled, moved to another date. They'd show up for that date canceled again. So did have some visa issues for our international international players. So it's been a it's been a mishmash. And then of course with the online courses and the professors being able to teach from home, the eight to four academic block doesn't exist. So now we have athletes taking classes at eight o'clock at night, you know, seven thirty in the morning. So we're not actually able to have a full team practice where we can have everybody there. I mean, if we could, it would only be small groups. So we'd have a group of four in this corner doing something, a group of four in that corner just doing something. So, but again, I, I just feel so fortunate that uh, that Bucknell has allowed us to come back, and you know, we are we are in a good we are in a good place because we could be like many other schools and sitting at home and, and uh, not doing anything. So. It's just, you know, you guys know how important a team is and the bond. And I think when they were home stressed out about the COVID and not practicing, just to be back together, even if we weren't practicing, it's important. And, uh, so our teams have been doing it. The men's and women's team have been, I told them to lead by example. Don't be the reason we get sent home. You know, be the example of what we're you're supposed to do to stay here. And uh, they've really embraced it and done a tremendous job with that. So uh, we should all be proud with how they've, how they've, muscled through this because I'm not so sure as a 19 year old myself, I would have done such a great job in college of remembering not to mask up and do everything right. Right. So, uh, but they're doing it. So we're very proud of them. So. Well, coach, thanks a lot for uh, the comments. And uh, before I wrap up here, I want to turn my attention to Jack. Jack. Thank you again for joining the call and wish you the best of luck with the semester here and finishing that out. And we're all going to, our fingers crossed that you're playing competitive polo in the spring in Kinney Natatorium. And if you are, you know, we'll be there cheering you on. And I know a lot of the alums will be back because the polo community is a really strong one and a loyal one. So good luck with that. And then to the guys on the call, um, thanks so much for making this happen. It's great to see you guys again. And in particular to the guys uh, that I was a part of that program with you guys, you know, Jason, Mark and, and Johnny. In the 21 years that I've been at Bucknell, those are the, the best years that I've had here. And, it, and a lot of it's because of you guys. And, you know, that was a great group. You guys represented Bucknell so well, not only in the pool, but outside the pool as well. And you've all gone on to do great things. And Dave, sorry, I didn't, I, I didn't have as close a relationship with you, but uh, I worked hand in hand with these guys for quite some time. So thanks for uh, bringing me back into the fold of Bucknell Polo because when I was a student here, I went and I watched Hilk play and I watched Kopecky play and I, I love the game. But when I got to know you guys, I really learned about the game and now McBride keeps me in, in the loop. So I'm all, I'm all good. So thanks a lot for all of that. And guys, thanks for everything you do for Bison Water Polo. And to those that watch tonight from home, thanks for tuning in. Go Bison. <laughs>